Hi everyone! Today, we will be presenting about titanium dioxide in cosmetics. I am Hazima and I will be explaining about what is titanium dioxide. So, have you heard about titanium dioxide? Pure titanium dioxide is a fine white powder that provides a bright white pigment. So, titanium dioxide has two types which is ultra fine nanomaterial product, pigment grade titanium dioxide. So, when used as a pigment, it is called titanium white pigment white which is PW6 or CI77891. Generally, it is sourced from ilmenite, rutile and anatase. I have spoken before, the source of titanium is anatase, rutile and ilmenite. So, this is the structure of titanium dioxide. As you can see, the small brown sphere is called titanium atom and the big red sphere is called oxygen atom. So, titanium dioxide structure has two double bonds. Titanium dioxide properties. So the chemical formula is TiO2. The molar mass is 79.866 gram per mole. And the, the appearance of titanium dioxide is white solid, which is odorless. And the solubility in water is insoluble. So the usage for titanium dioxide is printing inks, fibers, rubber, cosmetic products, food, the production of technical pure titanium, glass and glass ceramics, electric ceramics, metal patinas, and catalysts, electric conductors, and also chemical intermediates. Hi guys, I'm Nur Izzati Binti Mokmini Zan and I'm going to present about the preparation of titanium dioxide. There are two main process to prepare titanium dioxide which is the sulfate process and the chloride process. Okay, the sulfate process is run as a batch process and the chloride process is run as a continuous process. Uh, it is estimated that about 65% of the word production is based on the chloride process. Why the word use chloride process? Because chloride process produce small amount of waste from the toxication problem and they only produce rutile pigmented. Okay, this show that chloride process most suitable to be used to prepare titanium dioxide to produce titanium dioxide, which is the sulfate process. The chemistry of the sulfate process involves three main stages. The first one is dissolve the ore. Okay, the first step is the ore is usually illuminate. It is ground finally and dissolved in sulfuric acid to form a mixture of sulfate. This is the formula. Illuminate will react with two moles of sulfuric acid to produce titanium sulfate and ferrum to sulfate with two molecules of water. The second step is before the titanium dioxide is extract, the iron ions must be removed from the solution so that the color of the final product is not spoiled. The solution is therefore react with the recycled ion source to convert any iron to ions that may be present to iron to ions. This is the equation and the third step is the solution is allowed to stand so that the unreacted solid settle and the clear liquid is poured off before being concentrated by evaporation. Cooling then allow light green crystal of iron to sulfate to form and to be filtered off. They are sold separately. The remaining solution contain titanium sulfate. Which is the formation of hydrate titanium dioxide which is the hydrolysis of the titanium sulfate in solution to give insoluble hydrate titanium dioxide. This is the equation. Titanium sulfate will react with water and produce titanium dioxide with sulfuric acid. This is the last stage which is formation of anhydrous titanium dioxide. The process is the heating of solid in a furnace. This is the rotating cycle a cylinder which is typically heated by the gas flame. The gas flame. As the cylinder turns, the titanium dioxide passes along it and its temperature rises from 313 Kelvin as it enters to over 1000 Kelvin as it leaves. This is the equation and the last pause and the last step is after cooling, the product is melted to form crystal of the size needed. That's all for the sulfuric process. Process, which is the chloride process. The chloride process only contain two main stages, which is the first one is the conversion of rutal to titanium tetrachloride. The first process in this stage is the rutal is fed into is fit into a heated bed together with a source of carbon, usually coke. 
Okay, the second process is chloride is fit into the bed and the reaction takes place to form titanium tetrachloride in the vapor form which is removed from the bed. Okay, iron and other metals in the air are chlorinated and also leave the bed in the vapor stage. The oxygen in the air is combined with the carbon to form carbon monoxide and so and dioxide. Okay, the third process is the vapor streams is full and the metal chloride other than titanium tetrachloride are condensed and solid filled. Okay, the fourth process is the titanium tetrachloride vapor which contain almost pure titanium tetrachloride and has a lower boiling point is then condensed and stored as liquid. Okay, the fifth step is it is then reboiled and distilled to give a pure product to fit to, fit to the next stage. Let's continue with the next stage, which is the last stage. The oxidation of titanium tetrachloride. Liquid titanium tetrachloride is vapor and burned in oxygen together with a hydrocarbon fuel force, for example methane, to a high temperature to initiate the reaction and keep the temperature high enough for the reaction to process. This is the equation the titanium tetrachloride will react with oxygen and produce titanium dioxide with two molecules of chlorine. Okay, the first process is the titanium dioxide is formed by adding seed crystal as a fine solid in the gas streams and is filtered out of the waste gas using cyclone of filter. Once again, control of, uh, of crystal growth is important to give particles of the correct, si correct size of pigments. Okay, the second process is this is done by adding nucleating agents to the gas streams. For example, water of aluminium chloride and by cooling the products. The third process is the chlorine in titanium tetrachloride is released and recycled to the chlorination stage of the process above. Okay, the fourth stage is the product contains small amount of, of absorbents, chlorine gas which are removed. The last process is the product is washed and dried before milling and surface treatment in an uh, identical manner to that used in the sulfate process described. That's all from me for the process of titanium dioxide. Thank you. So hi everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to all. Hi, my name is Muhammad Haikal bin Zainal and I'll be presenting on the first example of titanium dioxide. So for the first example is sunscreen. So next, we'll be going on to what is sunscreen. So sunscreens, generally speaking, is sun, uh, products that help absorb or deflect the sun's ultraviolet radiation, also known as UV. UV is classified as three groups, which is the UVAs, UVBs, and UVCs, but we'll not be discussing on UVC since it is blocked by the Earth's atmosphere. So what are UVAs and UV, UVBs? UVAs are rays that can penetrate deeply into your skin, which can cause um, skin aging and wrinkles. So while UVBs only touches the surface of your skin which can cause burn uh, which can cause uh, skin burn and as well as skin cancer. So as you can see here, uh, right down here, the active ingredients such as UVBs and UVAs are ox octinoxate, octisolate and many more. But the main focus here is zinc oxide and titanium dioxide which can protect us from both UVB rays and UVA rays. So next, we have two types of sunscreen, which is first the physical sunscreen. Physical sunscreen contains ingredients like titanium dioxide or zinc oxide and protects skin by deflecting the sun's harmful UV rays. So basically, physical sunscreen acts like a shield towards our skin if we apply it. So next we'll go to chemical sunscreen. Chemical sun sunscreen contains carbon containing molecules, ingredients which are tasked with degrading or deactivating sunlight. Uh, creating a chemical reaction that transforms UV rays into heat. So basically, chem chemical sunscreen acts like a sponge which can absorb the sun rays. So since you guys have learned about the sunscreen, so there's actually many benefits of sunscreen to us when we apply it. So firstly, it can protect us against sunburn since we have UVA rays that can affect that can cause skin burn so using sunscreen can protect us from that so secondly it can reduce the risk of skin cancer so that actually from the uh, uv the uv rays can actually cause a skin cancer when we do not when we stay longer outside 
in the hot weather. So it's actually there's actually we are actually vulnerable to getting skin cancer, especially towards workers who works uh, workers who works outside in the hot sun, basically contractors. So lastly, uh, it helps maintain an even skin tone and helps to prevent the early signs of skin aging. So to stay youthful, you can you should actually wear sunscreen so you could uh, you would not look old. So for the last part of the sunscreen. Um, although sunscreen can, may give us benefits, it can also cause disadvantages to other living beings such as the marine life. So I have included a, an infographic of titled Sunscreen Chemicals and Marine Life. So how can sunscreen chemicals enter the environment? So firstly, when we go for an, a vacation for example, uh, we may apply sunscreen on our skin. Then um, we'll go for a swim or shower. The sunscreen may eventually wash off and enter our waterways, it can enter the sea. So how can the sunscreen chemicals affect the marine lives? So here there's actually an example of a sunscreen bottle which has the ingredients that can affect or affect all the marine lives in the sea. So here are the examples of the organisms that will be greatly affected. So first is the green algae. It can impair growth and the photosynthesis of the green algae. Second, uh, for corals. It can accumulate the chemicals of the sunscreen can accumulate in the tissues and induce bleaching and eventually the corals will die. And for and lastly, mussels, sea urchins, fishes and dolphins will be greatly affected too by the chemicals of the sunscreen. So um, how can we actually protect ourselves and the marine lives? So here are the examples. So firstly, we can actually sh uh, seek shade between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We can use an umbrella uh, during the hot weather. We can actually actually substitute for the umbrella if we don't like to use umbrella. We can use a sun hat and UV sunglasses to protect our eyes, sunshade and leggings as well. And there's actually sunscreen with chemicals that don't harm uh, the marine life too uh, nowadays. So that's all from my part and I'll pass it to the next presenter. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christina Alia Bitti Mamanana and in my part, I will present about one of the usage of titanium dioxide in cosmetic. One of the usage that we usually use is in loose powder and lip balm. Uh, just now, Haikal told about uh, the titanium dioxide in sunscreen, right? So yeah, let's have a look in loose powder and lip balm. Okay, so that, let's have a look what is the difference between loose powder and liquid. Okay, what is loose powder? Loose powder sets with makeup and extends its life so it will look fresh at the end of the day as you did at the start. Then, how to use the loose powder is apply your powder with a powder brush for a natural and dewy look. Okay, next, lip balm. Um, you, as we know that lip balm, of course, uh, we use it. Uh, on our lips, right? So, lip balm is a substance topically applied to the lips of the mouth to relieve chap or dry lips, angular chilitis or stomatitis, and cold sores. Okay, what is the benefits of loose powder and lip balm? First, it is also a UV resistant as it will block the UV light from our skin. Next, it provides the light coverage. As you can see, uh, loose powder can make your skin become brighter. Third, aid in hiding blemishes and brightening the skin, right? Then, fourth, it can give a glowing look on your skin and lips so you won't look pale and yeah, you will look fresh every day. And then, the fifth, boost brightening and ward off blemishes of the skin. Don't trust me that lip balm and loose powder contain titanium dioxide. Yeah, let's take a look. In this powder, loose powder, the ingredients it contains titanium dioxide as you can see. Uh, next, in this lip balm, it also contains titanium dioxide. Yeah. So that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Shaza Alana Jobin Tisham Zalatandi and I am in charge of presenting about pros and cons of titanium dioxide in cosmetics. Firstly, I will be explaining briefly about the pros of titanium dioxide in cosmetics. So, titanium dioxide is widely used in sunscreens as it provides protection against both UVA and UVB rays. Next, titanium dioxide has the characteristics of light scattering properties and very high refractive index. In this case, it means relatively low levels of pigments are required to achieve white opaque coating. Other than that, titanium dioxide also provides excellent coverage as it lightens dark shades and brightens up dull hues. 
not usable, titanium dioxide presents much safer option than conventional sunscreen chemicals such as oxybenzone and oxy oxytinoxate. Next, I will clarify about the cons of titanium dioxide in cosmetics. Generally, titanium dioxide used in cosmetics is with its larger particle of size. Nevertheless, when titanium dioxide is used in smaller size, which is the nanoparticles, the properties of it drastically changes as well as it may be more chemically reactive and behave differently than its larger particles, such that small particles of titanium dioxide are very similar to asbestos. Hence, it is very difficult to rid of if it is absorbed into the body. Next, nanoparticles of titanium dioxide predominantly cause adverse effects via induction of oxidative stress resulting in cell damage, genotoxicity, inflammation, and immune response. Moreover, titanium dioxide in nano form may undergo a chemical reaction under the sunlight. Last but not least, nanoparticles of titanium dioxide is inhalable, thus a one, and it can be considered as a possible carcinogen. It has been known widely that carcinogen may cause cancer. That is all for me. Thank you. So, you have learned about the preparation of titanium dioxide, the product of titanium dioxide which is sunscreen, lip balm and loose powder. You also have learned about the pros and cons about titanium dioxide. Here I am to tell you about some interesting facts about titanium dioxide. First, titanium dioxide has a high melting point. Second, titanium is corrosion resistant even from water and chlorine. Third, most notably, its food grade form is used as a colorant to enhance and brighten the color of white foods such as dairy products, candy, frosting, and the powder on donuts. Shock, right? Wow! Fourth, the titanium dioxide we use in our toothpaste has been proven safe by health and spread around the world. Fifth, the titanium dioxide application as an antimicrobial has been recognized for several decades and has been used for this purpose in fabricated materials and in air and water purification. So, did you know about the global share of titanium dioxide pig paint? 56% of titanium dioxide is used in paint to create opacity, durability, and enhance durable protection of the painted surface. 25% of titanium dioxide is used in polymers and specialties, specialties to minimize brittleness, fading, and tracking that occurs in light exposure used in vehicles and building materials. 9% of titanium dioxide is used in paper to improve whiteness, brightness, and opacity. 30% of titanium dioxide is used in ink because ink can utilize titanium dioxide to provide optical performance which creates opacity, whiteness and also influence glows. So that's all from us. I hope you can understand and remember about what we have learned today. See you next time. Bye-bye.